Good afternoon now from, from my side. So my name is uh, Victor Engelscheider. Uh, I am the representative of uh, Banque de France in this uh, in the Eurosystem Task Force that is exploring this potential use of a uh, new technology for wholesale central bank money settlement. Uh, I will introduce on my side, uh, introduce you to the full data interoperability solution. Uh, that is the third solution available for experiments and trials in this exploratory work. Um, moving to the next slide. Uh, I will guide you into this uh, full DLT interoperability solution in uh, two parts. Uh, first, we will try to better understand what is uh, the solution at stake uh, with the experiments having led to this solution and how it would work if it is implemented. Uh, in summary, we will see what are the objectives and main, uh, the main features of this solution. Uh, then in a the second part, I will focus on the setup of the solution for the exploratory work itself. Uh, next slide. So uh, indeed, the, the full DAT solution that is proposed for this uh, exploratory work uh, results from a large scope of experiments that we have conducted at the Banque de France level through what we call uh, a, a learning by doing approach. Uh, the dozen experiments that you see here have been part of the largest program ever conducted at central bank level uh, with the aim to investigate how the, to settle transactions on tokenized or native digital assets uh, with all sales central bank money available in the form of uh, CBDC tokens. For that, the use cases that we have explored have included either DVP, the, the boxes in blue here, uh, with cash token against asset tokens or a PVP, uh, the boxes in yellow here for an exchange of, of cash tokens in two different currencies. Uh, the objective, objective of these experiments have been to allow the market to reap the benefits of the blockchain on their side when setting transactions on DLT uh, with the usage of a CBDC token as a safe settlement asset. In order to do so, we have worked with a large range of uh, stakeholders such as commercial banks, uh, central banks, issuers, uh, for DVP with the large variety of assets you can see in the use cases type one here, such as bonds, shares, uh, usage of sovereign bonds. And uh, for PVP, as you can see it in the use cases type two, we have covered remittances as well as cross-border and cross-currency payments, or even uh, covered some advanced process emerging from the DeFi, such as the automated market maker project that we have conducted with other central banks. Uh, as regards the, the blockchain technology, um, we have conducted these experiments on public as well as on private blockchain in a way to be as much exhaustive as feasible for the technology assessment. Uh, all in all, this large program has allowed us to identify three full DLT solutions that you can see on the left side here, uh, namely the interoperability, distribution and integration are uh, each defined in the way we make the CBDC available uh, together with the asset token on the same DLT for integration and distribution or across two DLTs for the interoperability model. At this point in time, as was mentioned by, by the colleagues, this last interoperability model has been chosen as the easiest and the uh, uh, safest one we can start with uh, in this exploratory work and that uh, I will detail now. But for further details on these three full DLT solutions, as well on, on this program of experiments, uh, you can follow the link at the bottom left here to the uh, Banque de France report. Uh, next, please. Uh, now, um, out of these experiments, let's have a, a forward-looking view if implemented on the, on the full DLT interoperability solution uh, that is proposed for this exporter work. Um, as a reminder, the, the aim of this solution is to provide safe wholesale central bank money as a cash on the ledger in order to settle a counterpart leg also on the ledger. On that basis, uh, subject to detailed feasibility assessment that may occur out of this exploratory work. Um, first, the your system DLT that you see as a, an hexagon here, uh, including a wallet. Uh, would be an additional service offered by the euro system. Second, the wholesale central bank money available on such euro system DLT would be 
a direct liability of the euro system equivalent to the conventional cash balances available in the other pots of liquidity. Uh, as such, the euro system would ensure, as shown in point three, uh, seamless liquidity management between the existing liquidity pots and the new uh, euro system uh, DLT liquidity pot. Uh, the whole allowing, as I concluded in uh, point uh, number four, at uh, the settlement of participants uh, um, will sell uh, CBM on the euro system DLT to be final and irrevocable. Next, please. So more specifically now, let's see um, how the settlement would work in uh, implementation view of this solution. As I said uh, earlier, the objective of this solution is to make central bank money available for the settlement of transactions on blockchain uh, with the settlement performed across two distinct uh, DLTs. The one being the cash DLT platform set up by the Euro system on which central bank money would be issued and used for settlement. And the others being uh, DLTs set up by the private sector, such as market DLT for DVP or by other jurisdictions outside the Euro area for PVP. Uh, therefore, making the cash leg and the counterpart leg uh, both available in the form of tokens uh, for cross-ledger settlement. Uh, in a way to, uh, to meet this objective, the main characteristics of this solution are for the market participants to all the world central bank money in the form of cash tokens on the DLT of the euro system. Uh, therefore, uh, fully leaving the central bank money under the control of the central bank on this DLT. Uh, whereas the asset token can be owed on the market DLT where the participant expects to reap the benefits of the DLT, uh, be it in a private, permissioned or public blockchain. Uh, with the DVP being performed across the two DLT using NHTSC protocol uh, that orchestrates the transfer of cash on the cash DLT uh, in the box on the left side and the transfer of securities on the market DLT uh, in the box on the right side in uh, the whole in an atomic way. Uh, these characteristics combining the full control of the central bank money on the side of the central bank and the ability to use any type of blockchain on the market side uh, has led us, as, as I mentioned before, to select this uh, full DLT model uh, to start the exploiter work. Uh, whereas policy issues uh, still remain under investigation uh, regarding the other models that I've mentioned before, having the cash and the asset tokens available on the same ledger. Next, please. Uh, now, as a second part of, uh, of the agenda, uh, let's see how, how this model is used for the need of the exporter work itself. Uh, in terms of setup, in terms of uh, actors able to use it, or in terms of technology available. And uh, more specifically, uh, let's see how the settlement is performed atomically across the two ledgers uh, by uh, the participants that are allowed to use this solution. Regarding um, the setup of this solution for the exporter work, uh, the solution keeps, of course, the, the, the same objective and the same characteristics we have just described for the, the so-called uh, steady-state version, uh, allowing as such to explore the features of the solution uh, under the experiments or the trials. Uh, however, for the, for the purpose of this exporter work, uh, only exporter cash tokens, uh, also named ECTs, will be used as um, a proxy for the wholesale central bank money on DLT, uh, meaning that these ECTs will not yet be the result of a liquidity transfer from the Euro system global pot of liquidity, but only as an experimental liquidity relying on, on those uh, prefunded escrow accounts that have been uh, described also before, uh, which does not, uh, by the way, does not prevent from exploring the usage of cash tokens and the benefits of handling both legs of the settlement under uh, the same technology. Uh, similarly, the DLT that will be used for this exploitative work uh, shall be the DL3S uh, DLT platform that has been developed by Banque de France out of the experiments that I've presented before. 
as a proxy of uh, uh, the your system DLT platform. Next. Uh, in terms of uh, actors now, uh, this solution will involve uh, three categories of players on the cash DLT. Uh, first, uh, the box on the on the, um, the right, the central banks in their role to mint, uh, i.e. to issue or to burn, I mean to redeem the, the so-called exploratory cash token. Uh, this mint and burn been uh, once again necessary since the liquidity is not yet directly transferred by the participants from their uh, global liquidity pot to the DLT pot. Uh, then um, on the left side, the, uh, the second type of uh, actor will be the payment banks on DLT, uh, meaning the banks holding the cash on the cash DLT, uh, with the strong conditions for these banks to be artigious participants since the, the access to the World Sales Central Bank money uh, is restricted to such artigious participants. Uh, these payment banks will hold their cash DLT on dedicated cash wallets for their own usage or for the usage of their clients. And most importantly, these payment banks will be in charge to perform uh, the DVP through the HTLC process uh, on the cash side. Last um, in the box on the bottom on the right side, a third type of player, the clients of payment banks, will be able to act as an optional actor. Uh, as such, they cannot hold the cash wallet since they are not RTGS participants, but um, they will be allowed to use the RTGS account of their payment bank's wallet through uh, what is called a sub-wallet, with, uh, in this case, a read-only access to such purchasing power are granted by their uh, payment bank. Next, please. Uh, from a technological viewpoint, the uh, underlying features of, uh, of this solution uh, includes an implementation on the uh, on the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain under a permissioned uh, network, including uh, nodes uh, representing organizations that are uh, authorized to join this network and uh, granted with access to data and the uh, usage of uh, functions such as the, uh, the mint and the burn of cash tokens and uh, allocating the cash tokens in uh, dedicated cash wallets to settle the transactions, meaning that the nodes can be allocated uh, either to central banks uh, or uh, to payment banks for their clients. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, these nodes are hosted on uh, Banque de France Cloud, uh, the whole to allow to perform the settlement of uh, DVP or of uh, PVP, as uh, we describe it in the, in the next slide. Uh, indeed, the, the, the key feature now of this uh, interoperability model is uh, to allow the, the atomic settlement of the DVP or the PVP, uh, by using this uh, HTSC protocol that uh, allows a conditional payment cross network uh, relying on exchange of, uh, of secrets, the, the hash of HTLC under a given time bound, the, the time lock of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this acronym, uh, with the seller and the buyer having their corresponding cash and securities custodians involved on the respective platform. On that basis, uh, securities and cash are settled atomically, um, meaning on an all or none basis, uh, with an actual exchange of securities and cash if resources are available on each DLT platform, or with no settlement at all in case of a resources failure, uh, or calling for a contingency procedure uh, should this DVP fail for any other cause than the uh, resource failure, for example, uh, power failure. Uh, with the DVP being initiated by the market DLT was uh, uh, the trade information that are legally binding from, from their side. So that's it for the, the principle of the settlement protocol that we wanted to keep as high level and uh, easy to understand as possible at this point in time. Uh, in this uh, in this session, but uh, uh, should you need it, uh, and uh, you may need it for further details on this process, uh, are available in the in the service uh, description that is included 
are in the, the call are of our expression of interest. Next slide. Uh, now, uh, in practice, and, um, and to conclude this uh, presentation, uh, let's see how to participate in, uh, in the exploratory work with this uh, full DLT interoperability solution. Uh, as a first step, any uh, commercial bank that is interested to participate in to this work uh, will have to contact its central bank. Uh, i.e. the central bank of, uh, of its uh, jurisdiction as was um, as was detailed before uh, this central bank uh, will of course get in contact with the uh, uh, with the CB task force and with the uh, uh, NCB provider of the solution this commercial bank wants to test meaning here with Banque de France for this uh, interoperability solution uh, then in a step two uh, the onboarding on the RTGS side will be performed by the central bank of the candidate's uh, jurisdiction. Uh, then, uh, as is mentioned in the step three here, uh, either this uh, central bank will hold a node on the Banque de France DLT network uh, in order to manage the uh, exploratory cash token, uh, i.e. by performing their mint and burn, and uh, by uh, allocating these tokens to their participants' wallets. Uh, or as is uh, represented in uh, in the um, step three uh, BC as an alternative, uh, this central bank does not act into the Banque de France network and prefers to outsource this task to Banque de France as uh, the solution provider. Uh, in that case, uh, Banque de France will perform the mint and burn of these uh, uh, ECTs based on funding performed by the by the commercial bank. Uh, with its uh, central bank. Uh, so that's it for this uh, first high-level description of our solution. Uh, on next slide, um, I invite you uh, to move to the demo now and see how this works in practice with uh, a look on the tools uh, made available in the, in the A3S. And I will be happy after that to answer uh, any questions you may have on, on, this, uh, on this solution. The full DLT interoperability solution is one of the three solutions available in order to perform the Eurosystem exploratory work. This full DLT solution is the only one that offers the usage of cash tokens for the settlement of the cash leg of your DVP or one of the two legs of your PVP. This cash leg using cash tokens is handled on the DL3S DLT platform that has been developed by the Banque de France based on Hyperledger Fabric for experiments it has conducted in the last few years. This demo provides you insights into the main features you will have access to when using DL3S to make your payments with cash tokens. The Eurosystem exploratory work aims at assessing interoperability type solutions to provide central bank money on the cash leg for transactions on market DLT with trials using real operations or experiments using fictitious operations. These trials and experiments involve transactions settling a tokenized asset available on a market DLT against the central bank money that is available in the form of an exploratory cash token on DL3S. The full DLT interoperability solution provides three major features. First, it meets the need for safe transactions with settlement in central bank money. Second, it meets the need for innovation with cash on the ledger, available in the form of exploratory cash tokens for the trials and experiments. Third, it meets the expectation for an atomic settlement with DVPs performed across the cash and market DLT, relying on settlement automated mechanisms such as the HTLC protocol. The full DLT interoperability solution allows the settlement across DL3S for the euro tokens and the market DLT for the asset tokens relying on a settlement automated mechanism such as the HTLC protocol. It provides the main following functionalities. Number one, the management of dedicated cash wallets. Number two, the minting of exploratory cash tokens at the start of day to bring the liquidity from CLM or T2 to DL3S. Number three, the execution of a DVP with the payment of the cash leg under an atomic settlement initiated by the market DLT platform. 
here relying on a settlement automated mechanism HTLC. It allows the payment by payment banks on DLT or by their clients through the dedicated cash wallets of RTGS participants, the only ones that are allowed to hold a dedicated cash wallet. Number four, the burn of exploratory cash tokens at the end of day to bring back the liquidity to T2 or to CLM. First, let's start with the dedicated cash wallets management. The exploratory cash tokens used for cash payment are held in dedicated cash wallets. The management of these dedicated cash wallets allows the opening and closure of dedicated cash wallets, the initiation of exploratory cash tokens transfer and redemption operations, and the visibility on balances and transactions history. As a payment bank under the jurisdiction of a national central bank, willing to use exploratory cash tokens to buy tokenized securities, I have to ask my national central bank to open a dedicated cash wallet for me on DL3S. Once my dedicated cash wallet is opened, I can have access to my wallet's information through the user interface and my national central bank can supervise what I have on my wallet as well as the operations I initiate. As a result, the dedicated cash wallet of Payment Bank S is opened by its national central bank, NCB1. And the dedicated cash wallet of Payment Bank B is opened by its national central bank, NCB2. Next, the mint of exploratory cash tokens allows to create liquidity at the start of day in the form of exploratory cash tokens. These ECTs are created by the national central bank on DL3S against a transfer of liquidity based on escrow accounts in the RTGS for the exploratory phase or directly from CLM for the steady state phase. Concretely, on the screen, as a national central bank, I can initiate exploratory cash tokens issuance operations on payment banks dedicated cash wallets. Once the operation is settled, the payment bank can see the balance of its dedicated cash wallet updated with the posting of cash tokens credited on its wallet. As a result, based on a transfer on T2, 10,000 euros are transferred from Transit Wallet to Bank S Wallet on DL3S. Now for management of the delivery versus payment. Cross-chain DVPs between DL3S and a market DLT involve a seller and a buyer. Here, Bank B is selling securities to Bank S versus a payment of exploratory cash tokens from Bank S to Bank B. Once both payment banks agree on the trade, the DVP transaction is initiated on the market DLT side and then settled on both sides in an atomic way. Securities are delivered on market DLT and cash is transferred on DL3S. In practice, once the DVP is triggered on the market DLT and settled, both payment banks involved in the transaction can check the cash postings related to the DVP with a credit on the balance of the seller, Bank B, and a debit on the balance of the buyer, Bank S. As a result, a quantity of 70 securities is delivered from Bank B securities wallet to Bank S securities wallet on the market DLT side and an amount of €7,000 exploratory cash tokens is transferred from Bank S dedicated cash wallet to Bank B dedicated cash wallet on DL3S. Last, the burn of exploratory cash tokens allows to bring back the liquidity into the central liquidity pool. By the end of day, the business day closure is triggered, allowing to redeem exploratory cash tokens on DL3S against transfer of liquidity on escrow accounts in the RTGS during the exploratory phase or directly to CLM at the steady state phase. Concretely, by the end of day, as DL3S operator, I can trigger the business day closure that generates redeem operations in order to empty all dedicated cash wallets. This process will be automated at the steady state version. I can observe that all balances are set to zero. Payment banks can also check the update of their balances set to zero by the end of day. As a result of the business day closure, 
3,000 euros are redeemed from Bank S dedicated cash wallet to the transit wallet, and 7,000 euros are redeemed from Bank B dedicated cash wallet to the transit wallet as well. Same transfers are performed on T2 side from NCB1 account to Bank S account and from NCB2 account to Bank B account. For any further information, please refer to your contact for the exploratory work at your national central bank or at the ECB or at the Banque de France. All right. Thank you. Victoria, will you go through the through some some questions and uh, provide some answers if there are some? You're mute. Hold on. You're a mute uh, picture and hold on. Try yes. Again. Yeah, no. No, it's fine. Sorry for that. Yes, I was saying I, I try to catch the questions as as they as they come on the on the screen. Uh, so, uh, do you think that the cash tokens on DA3 subject to the markets in crypto assets? So I, I managed to catch this one. So. Actually, the, this, um, these uh, cash tokens that we use here, as as um, as was explained, are exploratory cash tokens. Uh, so, um, as such, they are not uh, subject uh, neither to this uh, crypto assets uh, regulation, uh, nor as uh, as a legal uh, uh, as legal um, uh, money so so far. So, they are just um, um, uh, used as uh, as exploratory ones. Uh, and uh, using the uh, the funding uh, process that uh, was uh, described with the with the escrow accounts, so I managed to catch this one. I try to catch another one. So, can you clarify how the HTLC leg is triggered? So, uh, we we tried here to um, to be as uh, as high level as possible, and as I mentioned, you will have uh, the details of that in the. Uh, in in uh, our service description attached to the uh, to the call uh, for um, expression of interest, but the principle is uh, the exchange of uh, messages. So actually, three messages um, through the HTLC process between the two DLTs, and uh, in these exchanges, um, the um, the this protocol allows to uh, uh, to uh, secure the um, the the security side. Uh, uh, when then exchanging the um, the hash and then to uh, secure the, the 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 cash side, and then to uh, deliver the cash and uh, to ensure the delivery of the security under the given time, uh, either uh, or or to uh, to cancel all that. So this is the process that is ensuring uh, this um, atomic uh, settlement, as uh, as I described it uh, in a high level way in this. Uh, in this presentation. So again, the, the full details of this uh, exchange of messages of these three messages are available in our uh, documentation uh, whenever we have to enter into, into these details with uh, with US candidate. Uh, what does the A3S stand for? So this is an easy one. So <laughs> it's a uh, distributed ledger securities uh, settlement system. Uh, as I mentioned, out of the experiments we, we've uh, performed, uh, we've identified these uh, three models, and uh, so it's uh, it's uh, a wider model than the, the one we used for for this uh, in, um, interoperability solution. So that's the uh, rationale behind this uh, this acronym. Uh, can commercial banks run a node on on the A3S? So I mentioned that uh, quite quickly. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh, for the management of uh, this uh, sub wallet of their um, of their clients. Uh, so indeed, uh, this uh, this is uh, possible. Uh, so, uh, do I have other questions? 
So can uh, our TGSDC holder bank have uh, many dedicated cash wallets? Uh, uh, indeed, yes. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is uh, fully possible if uh, they wanted to do so. It seems that we have a lot of questions. I try to manage them <laughs> as quickly as possible, but uh, but now we have the. Uh, the, uh, does escrow mean money must be pre-funded? So, uh, indeed, so the uh, the escrow account uh, allows to um, to put the money at the uh, at the start of day, as was uh, demonstrated, uh, and uh, so this money um, backs the, uh, the 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 ECTs that are used uh, in the in the cash DLT. And uh, at the end of uh, at the end of day, you um, uh, bring back these uh, ECTs and um, and the money on the RTGS are uh, brought back at the right level to the uh, by the central bank to the uh, to the right participants. <laughs> 